West Tigers fans, it's officially official. Jerome Luai is coming to the West Tigers in 2025. Come celebrate with us here on the West Life Podcast. Welcome in to another episode of the West Life Podcast. I am your host, Josh Barnett, uh, joining the boys again. We weren't planning on yeah, doing an episode probably till the trials, but we couldn't help ourselves. The great news today that Jerome Lu- Luai uh, is coming to the West Tigers in 2025. Press conference today, we've got some clips we'll go through and uh, have discussions with the boys about yeah how we feel about this. I think it's going to be 99% positive. I've seen, yeah, just judging by the reactions of West Tigers fans on the socials today, it seems like most people, now that it's official, uh, are on board. So, But uh, look, if you've got any opinions, feel free to drop them in the comments. So shouts to everyone joining us on the YouTube and the Facebook streams. Um, yeah, all our usuals, St. Shane, Gussie, Jason, Carla, all those, yeah, some familiar faces in there and some new ones as well. So our last episode uh, we did about the uh, old mates leaving the club and uh, Shane Richardson and uh, Barry oh, yeah. Farrell joining the club. Yeah, that episode, literally that YouTube uh, episode went viral and just triple times the second biggest video ever so shouts to everyone who's a new listener and on board with us and happy new year uh join join us for 2024 as we get closer to the trials in february when's the first trial as i'll go to you first and happy new year as yeah g'day josh g'day rob happy new year to you both happy new year as well to all of our listeners um i think the first trial for us is maybe the the 15th of uh, February or something like that, the 15th, 16th, 17th. It's somewhere around there. And a man who uh, is very happy with this news, a man who, look, he, uh, I'll give you a shout out straight away, Rob, in our Discord. We looked it up this afternoon. You told our Patreon members, patreon.com forward slash Westlife, you want to support the show and join us in our official Discord. And yeah, even in the offset, obviously with the Jerome Luai saga the the guys were uh, very antsy guys and girls very antsy uh, the last few weeks even over the christmas period and that sort of thing people were like when's when's it going to be official when's going to be official and rob you literally said it was happening what do we what did we look up today i think it was october late october that you said this was going to happen yeah october and happy 20- new year to you thank you october 25th guys uh, happy new year boys happy new year everyone uh, look, what a way to start the year for West Tigers fans. It's it's great news that we actually finally got our man. Uh, you know, we've been after him for a while. Uh, I was told it was a done deal, you know, a few months ago, actually prior to November 1, when we're officially meant to negotiate. Uh, but obviously, and I can only assume this, this is from no knowledge, obviously Canterbury came in at the 11th hour um, and, you know, threw a curveball in there and, and given, you know, Lou I was coached by Seraldo and got mates in Burton and Crichton and Kikau, uh, you know, at Canterbury, I think that might have sort of, you know, thrown a spanner in the works and he might have had second thoughts. So uh, obviously Benji's got this over the line. He, he loves Benji. We, we heard that in the press conference today. He's got a great, you know, relationship. He's very close with him. Uh, and look, yeah, some might say we've paid overs, but look, we'll, we'll go into detail more, but you, you can't buy that sort of confidence. Uh, and to have a player of his caliber won three premierships in a row, played state of origin in his prime, not getting him in his late 20s or early 30s, in his prime mm. with his hopefully his best years ahead of him. It's a coup for the Tigers. We finally get the monkey on it off our back about, you know, we can't sign anyone. Uh, and look, he's a great signing. He's not the best signing we've ever made. Shane Richardson's the best signing we've ever made. I'm sure <laughs> this, this, this might have turned pear shape if he wasn't there. He's a smart operator. He knows what he's doing. And, yeah, I, I just, you know, I think it's onwards and upwards, guys. It might not so much be 2024, but, you know, we've, we've changed the board. We've changed 
all the staff. It's just looking really positive, guys. And finally, as a fan base, we've got hope, or at least I have anyway, because I haven't had hope for a long time. I've renewed my membership finally after six or seven years in the wilderness. So ah, good. Happy to be happy to be back on board as a member. Always loved the team, but hated the freaking club. But now I can just let all that shit go and just enjoy my footy like everyone else on the weekend. And and there's plenty to look forward to, guys. We're we're in a really good position right now. Uh, randomizer mentioning what I was going to ask you next. Paul Lee must be seething right now. Well, Mr. Lee. Uh, Rob, he said in the media that him being sacked will put contract negotiations uh, in jeopardy, I think were his words, and turns out that's not the case. No, it turns out not the ca- that's not the case. To be fair, I mean, he probably said that. He probably got a microphone put in his mouth 24 hours after he was pushed out the door, so he's, he's probably a little bit of sour grapes there. Um, to be fair, apparently Justin Pascoe had a bit to do with the negotiation, and it mm. was well underway. So, you know, I'm not, like I say, I, I think both those blokes, as hard as they tried, they were terrible for our club. Um, but obviously, Pasco had some input there that was rather good. But to be fair, I, I don't think, I think Jerome Luai's loyalty, I don't think people realise how close he is with Benji Marshall off the field. Like, it's not just the fact that he's played with him and against him and all that sort of stuff. They don't realise how close they are. Benji Marshall is the reason Jerome Luai is at the club. So, uh, look, congratulations to everyone that got the deal done. Benji, even Pasco, definitely Shane Richardson for closing the door because that's one thing we've always never done. We look like we have our man and we lose him. You know, we had Josh Adokar, we lost him. We had Latrell Mitchell, we lost him. So it's just good that we've got this over the line and, and you know, we can build our club around this guy. And, uh, look, I yeah. Don't, don't want to get too far ahead of myself, but just very happy. You know, I, mm. I, I just love what he's about in terms of how much he believes in himself on the field. And we, we've lacked that, guys. We've lacked, you know, if, if Luke Brooks had Jerome Luai's confidence, he might be a, a different player. You know, we, it's very hard to get a player with that sort of confidence. And the fact that he's actually achieved so much for his club, for his state, for, for you know, his native Samoa, um, you know, it's, it's a great coup, guys. Like anyone that's saying we've paid too much, give yourselves an uppercut, seriously. Yeah, yeah I guess dollars don't equal confidence, do they? Exactly. In, uh, Luke can't Brooks buy that. Case. As just on that, I'll, I'll throw that to you in terms of $1.2 million per year in an increasing cap. I mean, like Rob just said, for an elite half, yeah, it's not, it's not paying overs. Like, we're literally getting a state of origin spine member whether you like him or hate him, he's one of the best halves in the cold best sixes. He's going to be trying to become a half, but yeah, $1.2 million a year. It had to be done, like surely. Yeah, the thing, I, in my opinion, that you've got to keep in mind is the fact that the salary cap is going up. So a $1.2 million now, three, four years ago or whatever, probably would have just been a $1 million uh, percentage-wise mm. when it comes to the cap. So... I don't think it's paying overs necessarily. I think if we're going to get that quality of a player um, and they're going to improve the team and the fact that we could potentially get uh, other high quality players want to come to the club to play alongside him, to play under Benji Marshall. um, I think there's a lot of potential there. So the benefits, it, it is, it is fairly risky, I suppose, but the benefits far outweigh the risk in my opinion. Also too, Josh, you know, looking at future players that might come to the club, we could actually snare those guys at market value. Like we don't have mm. to pay overs for every single play. If we become a club where, you know, like yeah. Lee and Justin always try to make us out to be a destination club that we're not, suddenly when you've got, you know, a strong front man like Shane Richardson, a personality like Benji Marshall, and hopefully his coaching can do a bit more talking this year in, instead of all the potential of it. And then you've got someone like Jerome Luai. You've already got Appy Corusau there. You've got a gun fullback in Jareem Buller. Uh, you know, you've, you've got a, a great hooker coming up behind uh, Appy Corusau as well. There, there's a lot of potential there. We've got some good young forwards. So people will want to join our club if we're competitive. So we, we need a guy that can make us competitive. And I think Luai is that guy. He might, might not be a, a number seven per se, but he, he relished that role with Samoa. So mm. I, I don't know how people could get upset. I mean, look look at who we were able to get, you know, this last offseason to play number seven, Aiden Caesar like four years out of the NRL and, and hopefully he'll do a good job for us this year. But like, that's how hard yeah. it is to get a quality half. So 
I, yeah. I don't I don't think it's such a bad thing and and what he might not bring you know in some ways he's going to bring in other ways with his confidence and that'll rub off on the 100%. other players uh, I just saw a comment where Scott saying, can we push to get him this year? Look, Penrith, there was a lot of talk about trying to get him early. You don't get players from a from a team that's going for a fourth straight premiership. You're never, ever going to get a club to just cut their half in the middle, not the middle of January, but January, they're in the preseason for this season. They're not going to just let their 5-8 go. They're, they, yeah, they're a professional outfit and they're going to, Try and get him a four straight premiership. So there's there's no way we're going to get him this year. So just um, we have to be patient. I guess we've got to wait twenty eight more games before we get him. Uh, righto. Let's get to the press conference, and we'll start with our first clip here. So if anyone missed the presser, he is Jerome. Basically, the first thing he said. Uh, in that press conference today. Well, press conference in this today. Normally we get a press release from clubs with a few quotes and that's it. We're doing it quite differently. Yeah, just a, a chance for me to, to own this decision. Um, yeah, and just uh, I think it's a great way to show that it's coming from my mouth, not from anybody else's. When did you make a decision? Because right, there's obviously that congestion mm. before Christmas. Mm. When did you officially decide? Yeah, not too long ago, man. So it's, it's been up in the air for a while and like I said, it's been the toughest decision I've ever had to make, you know. It's been back and forth. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's been back and forth. And obviously, um, there's some clubs that have been documented and been right in there. And um, there's been some clubs, um, yeah, who um, it hasn't come out. So the other voice there is his manager. I can't remember his name. Sorry, Rob, you might, might know it there. So he does mention that we're... Obviously, the Bulldogs were named as one team going after him, and he says he only made the decision basically this week, even though he told teammates that he's leaving for the Tigers apparently just before Christmas. But, Rob, what are your thoughts uh, on all that other teams? I mean, the fact, look, if he did choose us, I think our money would have blown every other offer out of the water. I don't know what other clubs would have had 1.2 mil over five years to throw at him. But, yeah, the fact that he's still chosen us with a lot of offers, apparently, that's uh, that's a good sign too. Yeah, it's a great sign. Look, I, I was told, as, as I told you guys privately in October, um, that it was a done deal, it was four years, and it was $4.4 4 Now, obviously, Canterbury's come in and, and really, you know, thrown a spanner in the works, as I said earlier. So for, we've obviously upped the offer by a year, and we've upped it by another 100000 a year. So... Canterbury were a serious contender. Uh, it was always going to be hard for Penrith, you know, to keep their stars. I mean, when you win three premierships in a row, you know, your, your market value of each player goes up. So unless you're the Roosters and the Storm that constantly, you know, seem to fraud the the salary cap, um, you know, it seems like Penrith, they they have to let players go. And they've done, they've lost a player or two every year, as we've seen now with Crichton. They're, they're going to lose Luai next year. They lost Kickout last year. They lost... Uh, Burton the year before so it's just very hard to keep so look I, I just one thing I want to say that's digressing slightly Josh is I just hope the West Tigers and I, I know we will do this from hearing what Shane Richardson said I just hope we really get our junior pathways sorted mm. out properly because Penrith have this wonderful capacity to replace players you know with, with no bodies and they suddenly they're just ready made for first grade so yeah yeah, while it's great to acquire your Lou eyes and you do need your, your few stars, as Shane Rich, Richardson said uh, publicly recently, the, the teams that he's won premierships at with South and with, who was it, Penrith, uh, those teams had eight juniors roughly in those, you know, squads of 17. Mm. So we need, we, like, we need our Lou eyes and we need our stars, we need our Coruscants, et cetera, et cetera. But we've got to find a way of just getting that talent coming through. And, and hopefully now by having you know, guys like Luai there and Coruscant, you know, some of these juniors that would be targeted by your Roosters and your Storms and whatever, we've got to find a way of making them, like, really love our culture and wanting to be Tigers, you know, for a long, long period of time. But the reality is hopefully we're in a position one day where we win three premierships in a row and we can't afford to keep everyone and they end up moving on. But 
let, let's get to that stage first. But, you know, I, I yeah. think we've just got to set it up from grassroots level. You, you just can't keep buying players to be successful. You've, you've got to have it come from within. And we have done that, it seems like, with Jareen Buller. But, you know, guys like Tedesco have been targeted by the Roosters and, you know, your Mitch Moses and, and those guys, and they leave us when they look like they're showing a lot of potential. So, yeah. you know, when we get guys coming through now, like your De Silvers and what have you, we, we want to be able to keep those guys. We don't want them going off somewhere else. We, we want to make them want to want to stay West Tigers, you know, for as long as we can. As we go back on the salary cap, to go on Rob's point there, the young go- young kids coming through, that's kind of what Penrith have done, haven't they? They've got their established stars on the big bucks and then you've got the kids coming through who will be on their first contracts and obviously the guys like Crichton and that sort of thing. Eventually, unfortunately for them, they become unaffordable, but they do have that line of talent coming through. So if we've got our spine sorted, what the big money players of Appy, uh, Jerome, uh, Buller's got a bit of a uh, pay rise. I think Steph is getting a, getting a fair amount of coin as well. Yeah, getting those juniors around those players, that's the uh, the formula for success for most teams that win a comp. Yeah, um, while Gus was there, it, he was pretty adamant um, about their five-year plan, which took a little bit longer than five years. But um, it in the end, it worked. Um, they had the junior pool that they were picking players from. Um, they were developing down in the lower grades and they were playing together in the lower grades and then they came up and played together in the top grade. It was They had that one year in 2019 where they finished 10th or 11th just under us, I think it was. Um, and they weren't that far off in a lot of games in that season. Um, they absolutely blew the Knights out of the park in the final game of that season, which was impressive and honestly really set them up to have a crack uh, at the start of 2020. And they had that really long win streak in 2020. And as as they gained chemistry and they played a lot more together, it just started to click and it just started to work. And they've been able to really keep that momentum going for the last few years. But yeah, as a, as a result of all their success, now those players are commanding a lot more money. Um, they're not going to be able to keep them all, as we've seen, because like they've lost Appy, they lost Kickout, they lost Burton, Crichton. Uh, Leota as well, um, probably others that I can't quite think of off the top of my head. So cut with success comes those players, yeah, commanding a lot more money. And um, if they want to go and earn that money elsewhere, they're very much in their rights to do so. Yeah, anyone that uh, begrudges someone, be it a Panthers fan or whatever, he's literally, the Panthers offered him, what, 850 So it, say they were offering him 850 to say the five years, that's an extra three hundred fifty grand for five years. It's over a mil and a half difference in salary. If you begrudge someone, and these guys can only work if they're lucky, they can only play until their mid thirties. If you begrudge begrudge someone for a one point five million dollar difference in salary, like like you need your head checked. Like seriously, who who's not gonna uh, and like it's only switching football teams too. It's not like you're going to work for, um, yeah, I don't know, some evil corporation that you might not want to work for. I guess that's the only situation maybe where you might not take take um, a serious pay rise. But for one point five million dollars, uh, yeah, man, I, I don't want to don't want to mention on air the things I do for one point five million dollars <laughs> extra on my salary. Uh, let's get to another clip here. Let's get to uh, Jerome talking about Benji. And I guess this is what the purpose for this was, was to clear, clear everything up, get everything out of the way and out of respect and courtesy for the year ahead, for my team and my teammates for 2024. Um, yeah, just wanted to get everything out of the way. So uh, without further ado, man... Um, for 2025, I will be heading to the West Tigers to continue my career. Um, obviously, the obvious reason was to um, was a great opportunity for me to provide and create for my family, but um, also to create something for myself. And I think that's um, I've had a great connection with Benji, and he sort of allowed me to, um, yeah, not yet, but 
we've just spoken about the future and, and what he sees in me and moving forward. So I'm really excited about it. About it. Um, excited about the challenge as well. Um, like I've seen a few headlines about, you know, who would go from the top to the bottom sort of thing. And, and it resonated with me just because um, I'm always backing myself to win no matter where I go. And um, I'm excited for the challenge, like I said, and hopefully I can bring that, that belief to the boys in 2025. As Benji, being a uh, he was fast tracked. Lee has you been tell us said that he was Tim Sheens was no longer needed, and Benji had advanced to become a uh, a ready made coach. But all jokes aside, the any criticisms you have of Benji being a rookie coach and that sort of thing, you can't deny that a he's going to attract players like Jerome to come play for him, and I think the boys are actually going to go out and. Play, play hard for him this year as well. Oh, absolutely. There's no denying the pulling power that Benji has. Like, um, he's potentially a future immortal of the game. Um, he's got a lot of, he's got a massive resume. Um, he was a talented kid who came through, played a lot of football, uh, provided a lot of highlights and just absolute sensational player that a lot of Pacifica kids, um, in particular, Kiwis looked up to, and it's just it's real it's really awesome to see uh, how players and the boys seem to be getting around him already. Um, things look really good at the club for the for the preseason. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing how the rest of preseason goes, how the team's looking come the trials, and yeah, like Benji, they're going to rip in for Benji. We saw that in the um, the Dolphins game. Like we were we were pretty outgunned in the Dolphins game, which was his first game properly in charge, even though we all know he was basically pulling the strings for a lot of games prior to that, probably most for most of the whole season. Um, but for his first official game, sort of in charge as like a caretaker or interim or whatever you'd want to call it, uh, the team the team really did rip in. Um, close Closer than we would have liked it to be, but it was good to see. And yeah, I think there's a lot of upside there and a lot of potential. Um, it is going to take a while for him to find his groove. And But in saying that, he's got a lot of brilliant mentors. Like it's it's been made pretty obvious that he's going to he's going to be relying on um, Wayne Bennett a lot. Uh, he had experience being coached by Wayne Bennett, and he's probably going to adapt his style a lot to how Wayne Bennett um, has coached his players. And yeah, I think there's a lot of potential there. What are your thoughts on the Benji connection, Rob? Uh, as I said earlier, Josh, it's it's huge. I don't think you'd be at our club um, without Benji Marshall being there. And let's face it, this is Benji's first big coup because when he was appointed as assistant coach, uh, you know, everyone said, you know, we players are going to flock to want to play under Benji and we really hadn't signed anyone of note. So this is a huge coup. I, I think also back on Jerome, I think, I mean, obviously you want to win as many premierships as you can, but I think also you need a new challenge every now and then. And I don't, I think the fact that Luai had more to do playing for Samoa and had that game management role, as well as utilising his his individual skills, I think that was an attraction as well to come to the Tigers. Mm. And and don't forget, too, when Benji was a player, he had multiple uh, shoulder reconstructions. Uh, Tim Sheens, in my opinion, kind of wrongfully tried to change him into a game manager. And Benji did become a brilliant game manager, but when he became a great game manager, he lost that individual flair for a while till he, mm. till he re, re got it back in about 2010 and 11. So... I, I think Benji's probably the perfect guy knowing what it was like to transform from that individually brilliant player to a game manager. And I think he's the perfect guy for, for Luai to, you know, to, to adapt to that role at our club. And he knows exact Benji knows exactly what he wants. And I think Luai knows what that's going to be. And, and he's looking forward to the challenge and, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing how it all unfolds. Yeah. It's crazy. Back in the day we had like Curtis Siren and, Playing five eight with Benji at, at halfback, um, Johnny Morris played a bit of six with him as well. Yeah, uh, right. Our next comment here from Jerome. Let's do his uh, talking about the spicy comments from Ivan, basically saying the things the things Rob's talking about there. Ivan saying that he can't really. Um, he wasn't Gaming. lying, you know. And uh, at the end of the day, um, it is a risk to pay someone any amount of money of what you think they're going to be for your club. But like I said, man, I've, I've got full belief in, in what I do and what I can bring, and that, that all comes off the back of hard work. So um, it did shock me a bit, but he wasn't lying. So. As so that, that, that kind of works perfectly what Rob 
was saying there. So, yeah, basically for those that did miss it, Ivan, before, when Jerome was kind of making the decision, but came out, which is pretty weird and unexpected for, to talk about your current player, but basically said that he's unsure that he could be a game manager. And I guess whether or not he was playing 4D chess or something to try and tell Jerome, or you might leave and be a failure because you can't game manage or something. Very weird comment by Ivan. But as Rob said, uh, in yeah, playing for Samoa, he did it. And yeah, he's, he's backing himself to do it. Yeah, and he, he really should back him because he was a big part of the reason why Samoa did as well in the World Cup as they did. Um, Ivan was well within his rights to say what he said. He probably shouldn't have. I still am of the belief that he probably shouldn't have said it. I think someone in the Discord said uh, or made a comparison between the NRL and the NBA where they apparently they can't talk about players that are in a contract year to try and devalue them or something along those lines. Um, Tampering, that's what, yeah. Yeah, that's what that was, potentially. Um, not saying it was or wasn't, but it could have been. Mm. But, um, yeah, it, it's <clears throat> it's one of those things. Like, he, he now will have the chance to prove himself to see if he can lead the team. Um, as he said, he's basically going to be given the keys to the team, um, and it's up to him what he does with those keys. If, he's, if he does what um, we know he, he could potentially be capable of or if he falls by the wayside, but, yeah, Obviously, like I said before, there's a lot of risk in what we're doing, but um, yeah, now it's up. It's going to be up to him to prove himself. Yeah, the, M- the NBA to go on that point as they have a lot of rules around that, but it's pretty funny because they obviously they don't do the year in advance. I think NRL might be the only code that you can sign a year ahead. So the NBA have a, a, literally strikes midnight uh, on a certain date in the off season. That's when you can. Uh, negotiate and sign with other teams. But literally every time it strikes midnight, you'll get uh, Woj on ESPN basically going, bang, uh, this player signed, this player signed. They're like Literally the contracts are done at 12.01 that night and they all signed for new teams, Like even though they hadn't technically been able to negotiate with other teams before that literally that, um, that time. So somehow they negotiated them in one minute after midnight. It was just... Um, pretty funny. So yeah, people do bag out the the system signing thirteen months in what is not a bit more, wouldn't it be like what fifteen months ahead of the next season that you can technically sign with? We used to have the the windows and all that sort of thing, but at the end of the day, I don't know if there's a perfect system. I do kind of wish that you could do trades again. I think the NRL is one of the few codes that don't do trades like even i think soccer do trades don't they or is it a is it just a buyout clause or something um we've still got that mid-season period though where like guys you know go from club to club just like when we got Naden that's mid yeah that's yeah, mid-season it's yeah still yeah a trade, but, though. It's still a trade it's still possible yeah but um i don't know at the end of the day it's it's modern sport players change teams all the time and if you want yeah Look, I think it's a better system than growing up in the 90s and Balmain and West were shit year after year and the likes of the Broncos and uh, Manly and Newcastle just dominated and won a Canberra in the early 90s as well, just won everything. And, yeah, the teams that didn't have any money didn't get the players. So we can't complain, even though our shit of a club has uh, somehow... In in it's in a comp where half the comp well not quite half now but it was half the comp make the finals and every team has the same amount of salary was somehow twelve years into a, a playoff drought but um look not for long not for long hopefully uh, Josh, next Josh, I just want to I just want to add I, sure. I think I think with the benefit of hindsight what Ivan Cleary said about Jerome Luai not being uh, the playmaker actually got uh, got him over the line with us. Because I, I think he would have relished that challenge. If, you know, besides the obvious that he was getting a lot more money mm. with us, I, I just think that really backfired. If that was a, a ploy to try and scare him into moving to our club, it obviously didn't work. So yeah, I, I'm, I'm glad Ivan Cleary said it because you know we, we've got the guy we were after. Yeah, and I guess Ivan surely when he said that he was just kind of realizing that he's going to go 
anyway, so he might as well say it. Like, surely if you had any chance of keeping him, you're not going to risk souring your relationship with him. No, but I think it was just a last-ditch attempt, Josh. It was just like yeah. a Hail Mary to, to try and change his mind. And I, I don't know about you guys, and I don't even remember who Jerome Luai was playing against, but his debut, which I think was on a Friday night from memory, was probably the best debut I've ever seen in my life out of any player I've ever seen. And he was playing halfback that night. So he can do it. Obviously, he doesn't have a strong kicking game like Nathan Cleary, but he can certainly do a job. And, you know, if anyone can be bothered uh, going to watch the tape yeah, of his very first game, he absolutely dominated. Scored tries, set up tries, kicked goals, just absolutely carved up the opposition. I'm just looking up that now. If you can talk for about 20 seconds, I reckon I can... <laughs> um, bring that up pretty oh, you quickly. Can, you was... can have a look. I can't remember who it was, but I just remember it was the most dominant performance. He got man of the match. And I just remember thinking to myself, boy, I'd love to have this bloke at our club. And that's got to be at least maybe four or five years ago. And I think he actually got the start because Nathan was injured. So Nathan didn't play that night. So he didn't have a supporting cast there. But while you're looking that up, Josh, everyone's saying that yep. he's not going to be a good player without being around a superstar team. I don't think Penrith are a superstar team. I think they're, they're talented players that have worked their way up from the bottom. Like, if you asked me, say, four years ago, who would I prefer, Dane Laurie or, or Dylan Edwards? I would have said Dane Laurie. Like, Dylan Edwards has made himself the player he is. So has Brian Toto. So has Liam Martin. I actually think they're strike players, that the ones that are the stars are the ones that are actually leaving the club. Matt Burton, mm. Viliami, Kick, Viliami Kickow, Jerome Luai. Like, yep. they're stars, you know. So, uh, obviously, Nathan Cleary's still there and everything is built around Nathan Cleary. But, you know, I mean, they've got a great two great prop forwards. But I, I think they've established themselves as two of the best in the game. I don't think they were the best in the game. They've just they, they've just got a good culture there and a good development system. And, and that's what mm. I'm hoping we can do at our club. So his debut was 2018 against the Knights. They won up in Newcastle 29-18. He came off the bench. James Tarmel was on the bench with him. The halves for that game. Uh, who wants to take a guess who the halves? It might, it might have been his first We're starting game then, Josh. It, wouldn't, it, wouldn't, it yeah. wasn't off the bench. Because I remember the game was at Penrith Park. And so, I, I don't like I said, it was a Friday night game from memory and he started at halfback. And but I just can't, I can't for the life of me, I can't remember. I should have done some research before I, I came on the show, but I just remember watching him and thinking, wow, who the hell is this guy? So the game, but, but definitely he, started. His, his second game was a game he first started that was seven rounds later against the Warriors. They won 36 to four. He did play at That's halfback, it. as you said. That's his it. halves That's part, it. Tyrone May was his uh, five eight. So, um, yeah, they beat the Warriors 36 to four. In in Penrith and, in that game, yeah, so that's the one. Yeah, uh, try to Dallin Botani is Lesniak at fullback. So yeah, there you go. Um, right, we'll go one last um, clip here. I just saw that Shanta. I did invite a uh, a Panthers fan to give their perspective on um, on this signing as well. We'll get get a a view from the other side, but we'll just have one last listen to Jerome's presser here. I'm just trying to find which one. Here we go. It's big, man. Um, every year's big for any player. You know, they want to do great things, and um, I'm excited for the challenge ahead. I don't know what, what's in store. I've still got 24 to go through, and, um, you know, I'm just looking forward to getting the body right again. I'm, I'm still in rehab, so just trying to get the body right, but... Um, every year I'm walking into having the mindset of having my best year yet. So hopefully I have my best year yet and then 25, have a better year. So, so as a point that Rob made earlier, uh, Luai's age coming to us in his prime, he's talking about every year he's getting better. Look, for the first, what, three years of his contract with us, you could probably argue he can do that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think he's, what, uh, 26 maybe? I've got his player profile open because you guys wanted me to look at some stats. Um, yeah, he's 26. His birthday is the 16th of January. So he's going to be 27 um, in a couple of weeks. He'll be 28 at the start of his five years with us. So 28, 29, 30. There's absolutely no reason why he couldn't um, continue to grow and improve as a player in that time. 
Uh, yeah. you, know, you look at the likes of some halves who were still playing pretty much at their peak in their early to mid thirties, like the um, James Maloney. <laughs> yeah, the James his, Maloney's his the, predecessor. Um, oh, Cooper, Cooper Cronk. Cronk won back to back premierships mm. on his last legs with the Roosters. Yeah, he did. So he's about um, 34, 35. Without a shell. Yeah. yeah. And he and he was absolutely still playing at pretty much close to his best um, yeah. in those later years of his career. Uh, so there's no reason why Jerome couldn't be the same. Anything to add to that, Rob, before we get to our no, not Panthers not guest? not not at all. I, I think, you know, you just look at the fact that Benji Marshall himself wanted an extra year with our club before he went to South and he was about thirty five or thirty six then. So if Jerome wants to, I mean, unless he cops a retirement contract from another club when he's 33, I mean, we could have Jerome for another 10 years, really, not five. So he, he's mm. got plenty of football years ahead of him, provided he stays, you know, healthy. Right, I'll bring Shunter in. So I thought to finish the show, we've talked all the uh, the Tigers' bias tonight. Um, I thought we get – he's literally got in his bio, Panthers fan. Um, Shunter, welcome – making your debut on the West Life podcast. Oh, thank you very much for inviting me on. Uh, so what are your thoughts with Jerome? Did you expect this? How long have you been expecting this to happen, basically, for him to leave? M- maybe not necessarily the Tigers, but uh, did you suspect, basically knowing going into a contract year, that it might be the last year this year of him? I really didn't think so. I, I honestly did think that he was uh, he was going to stick around. Because uh, I, I feel like the club weren't expecting to lose um, Stephen Crichton. I think they were they were hopeful of retaining him, and then you know, obviously ho- also hopeful of retaining Spencer Lenu. But losing both of them, I thought, oh, okay, well maybe they'll be able to retain Luai. But um, I think, yeah, it, it's really it's really funny. I think the thing that, that the first time that I thought Ooh, he he might be uh might be on the way out or he might start seriously considering it was um when Ivan Cleary uh you know possibly still drunk from Prezo night started openly musing about how uh hmm, yeah geez if someone was gonna offer Jerome big money that's a bit of a risk and uh just started mm. talking like that and I was like what why are you doing that? <laughs> like it, it's it's just saying he's saying stuff that didn't really need to be said and uh yeah and we basically got well yeah i guess today in the press we got confirmation of that where uh, jerome was saying like you know like there's no real hard feelings about it because he uh jerome said oh he's you know saying the truth but um yeah he re- yeah for that to come from your coach to really like try and put the doubts on there oh yeah we think jerome knows what's best for him is to stay in penrith it's like yeah, when you get someone who, you know, as we've seen, is so competitive, just for whatever anyone thinks about him, he is competitive. He really cares about winning. He hates losing. Saw him go a bit crazy at the back end of Origin when he's losing. Mm. He doesn't like it. So yeah, so yeah, someone who's competitive like that, of course, it's gonna. Yeah, he will seriously. Yeah, that, that's what. That's the first time I thought. Ooh, okay, well, what's our offer going to be to him? And given what has been said as well, is he going to like want to show people that he can do it on his own out of the uh, Penrith system and away from Nathan Cleary? So, yeah, once those, com- that, that, those comments were the first time where I seriously thought, oh, okay, yeah, we uh, yeah, we might be in a bit of trouble here retaining him. So, yeah. Do you think he can? You mentioned that, yeah, the things that Ivan are saying about him. We've talked about it earlier in, in the show about how he did it for Samoa. So do you think he can get out of Cleary's wing and, um, yeah, and fly himself? Uh, I, I do. I um, I know it's – it's I know. I'm just being super optimistic because I really – I really like um, – I really like Will. I, um, and I am very, very happy for him to have, uh, to have landed this deal and, um, and yeah, for the Tigers to, to have picked him up. Um, I think – yeah, I, I think he can do it. It's just got to – as long as the as long as the Tigers can sort of find someone that's uh, or settle on a halves partner that's going to be complementary to his skill set, like I've seen, oh god, I can't remember what talking head it was, but someone questioning the uh, the contract, uh, which I think is which I think is fair, pretty much fair value considering all the circumstances. By the way, like one point two, yeah, like, for sure, yeah, that, and we know the Tigers that. that we're going to pay we're going to pay overs to get. 
but it's the not Star there. Yeah, we talked about that earlier in the show. Yeah, yeah one point two. Not even that, in a, not even that far over, really, considering the changes in the cap. Well. Um, but yeah, I think want to acknowledge and respect right. all those clubs, eh, brother? 100%. Yeah. Do you want to elaborate on that, brother? Did I play that? Yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah, come maybe. From. That's, oh, ever since I think, yeah, come I think that's market, coming from your end there, Josh. There's, there's been a lot of interest and... Uh... Yes. Ah, oh, well. Anyway, thankfully he didn't go to the Bulldogs. I couldn't cop that, but... <laughs> don't mind him going to the Tigers. Don't mind him going to the Tigers, though. That's, that's fine. Uh, yeah, but I do think as long as the Tigers can settle on a Haas partner that's going to be complementary to his skill set, because... Um, I've seen, uh, yeah, as I, as I started saying before, I've seen some talking heads. I can't remember who, but saying like, oh, well, what about, how can you offer 1.2 million to a bloke who's never had to kick out of trouble in his own half? I'm like, well, he's not going to be kicking out of trouble. Someone else will be kicking out of trouble. I have someone with a long kicking game and stuff. You're bringing him in to do what he does well. So you're bringing him, yeah, you're, you're bringing in him for his own skill set. You're not going to try and, uh, no one's going to try and do the silly thing, and uh, hopefully, and pigeonhole him into like, oh well, you're the you're the lead half now, so you're going to have to play like stereotypical, like a halfback style because it shouldn't matter. I mean, if they stuck him in the number seven, that doesn't really matter as long as he's allowed to play his own game and they've got someone with a complementary skill set. Obviously, no one's going to be to the level of uh, Nathan Cleary as a half. No, no one but is. Just, no, as long as he got, but yeah, as long as they've got someone, yeah, halfway decent, like you know, like a long kicking game and someone who's going to. Do a little bit of organisation, you know. Jerome can still be like the dominant half, and I think, yeah, like I think this this is going to turn out to be fine for the Tigers. It's um, yeah, and, we'll it's, and that's it. it's a big swing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, but no, that's it. It's a big and yeah, it's the big swing that they had to take. And um, yeah, like I am honestly happy for like all parties involved. I mean, except Penrith because, well, you know, <laughs> I mean, like, like as much as people are. Like, oh, that's okay. We've still got Nathan. We can shove up. Or put Brad Schneider in the halves. Let's, let's just let Jerome go early. People, people are nuts. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I would be so, I'd be so devastated because uh, I saw rumors too. I think like a few weeks ago, there were rumors kicking around saying, um, oh, you know, well, if the Tigers were to let David Clemmer go to Penrith and um, I wonder the other young halves, I can't remember who. Galvin, yeah, Galvin. yeah, that's it. Mm. Mm. Said, "I'll oh, let them, let him go to let those two go to Penrith, and they can get Lua a year early." Mm. Um, and I was thinking, like, no, don't do that because that I that that's it. I, I don't that'd be punting on twenty twenty four for Penrith. Yeah, exactly. Um, and you go for four premierships in a row. Yeah, yeah, that, that's it. So that mm. so yeah, basically, but yes, look, I'm really happy for Lua and like really happy for the Tigers to to uh, land a real big fish like this. That um, mm. yeah, can. Yeah, as he, as you guys saying, he's in his he is in his prime, and he can stick her out, and yeah, he can get a second contract there. He can he can be there for a long time, and it's a dude who's so used to winning, hates losing, and so you got to hope that that um that helps drive that that culture. And I mean, I mean, you saw with that, you've seen with Happy Coruscant so far, all the stuff that got, that guy, all the tricks and stuff that he pulls out, just desperately trying to win, just does everything to win. And now you have got another guy who will be busting his ass to to like to win and to like bring the boys along with him so yeah i really yeah i really i really like it for everyone you know except penrith but you know three premierships you can't sort of like cry too much for that yeah yeah it's like the new new england mm. patriots complaining <laughs> about being shit this year when he won tom brady won what six rings um yeah that's it <laughs> and they won uh, that debut about 20 times in a row yeah mm. uh shanta do you think this to get going on another american sports analogy could this be a last dance for you guys this year you are starting to lose a lot of big guns yeah i i, I think so. I, I think so i think this is a lot mm. yeah i mean because look obviously yes luai in 2025 is a big loss but uh, again like losing uh like stephen Crichton for for this year is a huge is a huge piece as well I mean, I was I, I deluded myself for you know half of last year at least, saying that's oh, okay. He's a center. He, he's a center for us, but then he's mm. so much more than that. And so, so already it's already going to be a struggle this year losing, like really losing him because of what he does out wide, and then and also having it being our last year with uh, with Luai. Um, yeah, unless uh, I, I don't I don't even know that they've got someone who's uh, just like I, I'm not sure who the clear cut successor to to Luai is yet I'm, I'm sure the club probably ha would have an idea but yeah i feel like this would be the um like this would be our last real crack at a, at a premiership and then it'll be 
like the um oh, you know the, the cliche with american sports like, no we're not rebuilding we're reloading i think that, <laughs> i think that's it i think the 2024 is our last proper like yeah we're going balls for the balls to the wall going for it uh into uh in terms of being able to actually get up there and make another grand mm. final but yeah i reckon uh 2025 will probably be like a, a and you know however many years it takes us like a reloading thing until they mm. yeah figure out a new combination there i think with your junior base and the best player uh, might in my opinion the best player in the world in nathan cleary i think you'll be okay and you might you won't be like fucking around and making a grand final like in second gear like you are now but i think i think penrith as long as nathan cleary for the rest of his career if he's healthy i think you guys will be uh okay you got a good amount of talent coming behind him which is um yeah uh, rob mentioned earlier you didn't hear it but we want to get to that sort of thing with our club as well like we've got the campbelltown area the balmain areas good ju- young juniors hopefully coming through as well and we w- kind of want to set up what penrith would set up out there and that's yeah. what Jack promised us well well yeah you've got the um i mean for all the uh, i mean all the uh other unpleasantness with the the pasco era you at least got your <laughs> um you at least got like the 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 nice new like training facilities and stuff so yeah that's that that's a that's a plus so uh, i don't yeah, know if that, you know that kind of thing thanks Mm. I don't know if you know about our show, Sean. We're, 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 we're big fans of Justin Pascoe. We're sad to see him go. Ah, oh, yeah, I know. It's, it's such a such a shame, too. Yeah, he's had. Yeah. you know, it's really. I was really funny. I love. Oh man, I love I love the Justin Pascoe grift, though. You know, like I think he. What did uh, I think when he uh, it had to have been? I swear the timing. He was already out the door at Penrith, pretty much. Like, I, I swear he's already knowing he's going to the Tigers, and then he got to. You know, they sent him overseas on a junket to America to like, you know, <laughs> learn to like, you know, go on like the, a nice cushy business trip on Penrith's dime and then like very shortly thereafter was like signed with the Tigers. <laughs> but yes, no, he's been he's been thieving and living for a while. But um yeah. Got boys, any any questions for uh Chantal before we wrap up here? Uh not really, but yeah, just echoing what Shanta said, I mean Look, Luai's come to us definitely for the money, number one. Um, I'll have you know too, Shunter, if you weren't aware that Stephen Crichton's family, not not in Luai's case, but Stephen Crichton's family definitely pushed him to leave for the money. The, mo- the money was so significant to go to Canterbury as opposed to what he was offered at Penrith um, that, yeah, he he sort of took the plunge and it was basically said, mate, we need, you know, we want you to take the money. Like, it's it's life-changing for our family. Mm. And you've got to respect, you've got to respect that too. Especially with these guys, like I, I don't, I don't begrudge any of them for leaving. Like any of them who, like, because I, I guess that's probably, uh, I guess that's the the like part and parcel with like this ridiculous run that Penrith have been on, where it's like, oh, that's okay, yeah, go leave for the money. Whereas if um, if we'd sort of, uh, yeah, like if we, you know, not gotten over the hump, then we'd sort of be like, no, almost getting there and being, you know. If we were stuck in the, if we were stuck sort of with like a choker's tag or something like that, I'd be filthy every bo- every bloke that wanted to leave. But uh, yeah, no, all these guys that yeah that are coming through, all these young guys that get offered, yeah, like as you said, life changing money. It's like, well, yeah, just just take it, man. Yeah, Shanta, have you heard of any any rumors? Because I've just heard this one recently. Have you heard of any rumors where there's a little bit of uh, unrest within the club in terms of the Polynesian players and? how their contracts get played out to let's just call them the non-Polynesian mm. players. <laughs> I, oh, no, I saw, I, I saw the tweet. If that's what you're talking about. No, the, well, the, yeah, well, so I don't, I don't, I don't know the thing? tweet you're referring to. Someone, someone posted that exact. Yeah. Someone I, in the, I, in I, the I, discord. I the told it. Yeah. What, why did, why did Isaiah, Yo, uh, why did uh, Dylan Edwards, why did Liam Martin's contract? Like they all got top dollar. Nothing got played yeah. out in the media. And then the guys that you guys have lost, such as uh, Viliami Kikau, Stephen Crichton, uh, Jerome Luai, that's all been played out in the media. I've heard there's been a little bit of dissension within the ranks. I've actually heard too, and it was funny because obviously you saw Brian Toto wearing the Canterbury jersey yesterday, but I got told I got told a couple <laughs> of weeks ago that, that Brian Toto was a little bit agitated, even though he's on a contract till 2027. So I'm just curious, have you heard any of those rumblings at all? I I actually haven't no, but just thinking about it now that you have said it, I'm like, yeah, they really, yeah, the the guys that um, 
but uh, I guess that's uh, I guess that's it. The guys that have stayed, the guys that have stayed, um, and have been getting, uh, well, yeah, the, the guys that say, as you said, Yo, Edwards, and Martin, and that even. I don't know. Like you didn't. I guess you really didn't hear about other suitors for them. I suppose you know there wouldn't have been anything serious. Like it takes something serious for someone like uh, an Isaiah Year to leave. But then again, look at you. I mean, like James Fisher Harris. Like he just got the he just got the bag and he stayed. And like Leota yeah. another one who yeah, they, he just got the big money and stayed. Um, yeah. So I don't know. Yeah, there might there might be look there might be something to it. And it is a fun, it is a coincidence though. Yeah, as, as you said, like a lot it's of the well, I uh, think it's more coincidence, the, but it do, definitely is food for thought. Do, isn't it? Oh no no absolutely absolutely. And but yeah, Toto was another one. His deal got sorted out. There was no. Um, I think I guess too because he didn't really I don't even think he made it off being off contract and that's the thing like he he didn't I, I think it was just an extension and like a lot of these guys are just extensions they didn't make it to being off contract Liam Martin I think was I think he was off contract for twenty twenty might have been off contract for twenty twenty four I can't remember but basically he signed a one year extension but then he signed a multi year deal after that so there was a little bit with him but uh, yeah that, that's it I had. No, but I hadn't. Uh, I hadn't heard. Uh, I hadn't heard that though. So it's, uh, well, well that ultimately, you can't criticise the Penrith management because it hasn't cost them a premiership. Like they, like you think about yeah. it now. I, I don't think you've ever really replaced replaced Appy Corusau, and you won the premiership last year without him anyway. So, oh, that's you know. they, they just figured so they figured it out. They just it's so it, it was it was heartening. I remember watching those like the first few rounds, going like, oh geez, it's so it's so clunky, and then. Um, they just they just figured it out, and if uh, uh, oh, well, I'm just uh, and I'm yeah. Speaking of like the the hooking situation, I'm just glad that um, those hackers apparently did, they mustn't have gotten Mitch Kenny in too much trouble. Haven't heard anything about his uh, <laughs> no, 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 about no. his Instagram posts. So yeah, like, like yeah. unless unless the game evolves, Shanta, I, I think Penrith are going to be in the finals for the next six yeah, or seven years. I, I don't. I, I mean, that, whether they win premierships or not is another story, but. As long as you got, you know, Nathan Cleary and Dylan Edwards and, and a strong forward pack, if the game doesn't change where it goes back to like two thousand and five and becomes, you know, a bit touch footballish and stuff like that, I, I think you'll be around for many years to come. So I, I think Penrith are in good hands and, and, and they'll be a force. Just like the, the Roosters and Storms have, have made semi finals for so many years in a row. I think you guys are in that same boat right now. Mm. Yeah. It uh, should be like that, isn't it? One Penrith non-related thing, saw a few people asking in the comments talking about uh, Justin Ollum, talking about getting excited for, for centres. Chantel, a lot of our fan base are getting excited about uh, Justin Ollum possibly coming. I'm hearing that's mm. pretty much going to happen for this year. So, oh. um, yeah, my my guy, Sean Bloor, um, yeah, I'm going to have to pour one out mm. in the gutter because he's oh, man. heading... Heading down Mexico way, unfortunately. Um, so was that actually? So yeah. was it actually a trade deal like that, or was it sort of separate it's, bit it's, of business? It's, it's yeah, no, that's apparently it was. Well, that's yeah. What been on been and talking off about. for so long, hasn't it? Mm. Yeah, I think um, by the sounds of it, it's going to happen. So, yep. If you yeah. see me crying on the internet, uh, you'll know why. No, that's uh, look. That's all right. I mean, if Bloor was going to leave, I would have hoped that he'd, you know, he'd come home. Come but home. Yeah. No, but now he's going even further away. So yeah, that is sad. It's always sad when you know talented young players go down to Melbourne. Yeah, it is. Yeah, fuck the storm. I agree. Um, yeah. Anything else to add, boys? Before we yeah you know, say goodbye until probably the uh, the trials kick up. Well, we, yeah. Getting to uh, mid February. No, it's Two just things. good to have a bit of hope again, and, and things are looking up onwards and upwards for the West Tigers. So uh, I just think you know the whole there's a whole freshness about it now, and all you know every every year we keep getting told new era, you know, new badges, new this, new that. It actually genuinely is a new era now. Like Benji is the head coach officially now. We've we've cleaned out front office. Uh, we're starting to make some good signings. So you know, like I said on the last episode it might not get some short-term success but I, I think shane richardson is going to set up our future and and he'll put some people in place that will follow out a plan that he will map out yeah he's hoping he's not a russell wilson situation for us 
I know Shanta, I, I haven't brought up Super Bowl 50. Don't do that. Um, being a Panthers <laughs> fan, but fuck me, mm. this the the Broncos are becoming the West Tigers of the freaking NFL. I told you, I told you. Uh, right, if anyone uh is out there, so yeah, as I said, we'll get into yeah two episodes a week and that sort of thing. Some think of some ideas and fun things as the season comes up. Um, when we do, when do we play the Panthers? Can you think of the top of your head? As when have we got the Panthers? Uh, Bathurst, it's, it's round, round nine, this. round nine in Bathurst yeah. again. Yeah, I think end it's of April again. At the same time as last year. So uh, yeah, I think it's a get... it's a week before um, Magic Round. I think so. It's like the first week, first or second weekend of um, May. Beautiful. So Santo, we'll have to get you on leading that one. So anyone yeah, out there, out there, if you again. do. If you do have friends that don't go for, go for the Tigers and go for someone else, I don't. But if you do know someone, um, yeah, that supports the team that we're going to come up and play, yeah, send them our way. Um, yeah, they can come on and help us preview the game. So yeah, Shanta, if you're available, come. Yeah, uh, coming up in May, then yeah, that'd be awesome. Uh, and yeah. if anyone would like to, yeah, sponsor the show as well for this year podcast at Westlife dot com help us um yeah it'd be nice for this to become a full-time job but um yeah so we can make the show bigger and better as well so yeah podcast at westlife.com shouts to our discord um our patreon members patreon.com forward slash westlife um shanta we end the show with a go tigs sorry what's, what's sorry josh campus? before you do that i i, I did have a yep. couple of um things <laughs> sorry <laughs> that's all right uh, so just a couple this quick happens every questions show for... <laughs> a couple quick questions for shanta firstly um who's who do you think is the bigger loss for this year for you guys between uh Crichton and len you uh yeah Crichton for sure it's uh yeah as i said before i tried to delude myself last year to being like oh look it, they, they, they're gonna pay him as a fullback he's, he's just a center for us we can't you know offer him that much money but then he's a Bloody great defender. Um, I mean, we've seen in the big moments too. He he's just made for the big moments. Like it's, I mean, it's a it's a it's a cliche thing, but he really is. Like you know, seen him ball hawk so often. Um, just a great defender, and yeah, I mean, you saw it. Yeah, like towards the end of the grand final there, um, where you know he started to he started getting better of that uh, getting the better of that matchup with the Katoni Stags, and then you know ducked and weed and like and uh, and scored a try. He's just yeah. Just a big game player, and yeah, he's yeah, he's like a, a, I mean, I guess a, yeah, paying a center that much money would have been a luxury. It's a luxury that Penrith just can't afford now. So I think he is he's a bigger loss. Len Yu is an absolute psychopath, and I love him, but yeah, Crichton's such a huge loss for this year, and I and uh, yeah, it remains to be seen whether or not Taylor and May plus a bit of extra muscle is gonna you know do a serviceable enough job out there. So. Yes, especially the way you used Crichton this year too, Shanta, because you played him left centre, right centre, just, you know, like from week to week. It just depended on who the opposing centre was. He's that good defensively um, that you just like, he was never permanently in one position. He, he was, he's a great player. He's the best centre in the game. It was, yeah, it's ridiculous. Like most of the time you think like, oh, bloody hell, we're chopping and changing combinations. It doesn't matter. It just did not make a difference. Well, he no, was just always a high quality player. Just like, imagine that, yeah, having a chess piece like that, it's, it's insane. So, yeah, yeah ruined a few of my same game multis, though, mate. That, that, that really upset me a little bit. <laughs> like, oh, that's so okay. Yeah, Chris, Chris, like, oh, no, he's going to be left center. <laughs> He'd be, he's going to be left center. That right center oh. can't tackle. Then I notice he's on the right center. I'm like, what the hell are you doing there? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's, yeah, that's it. Oh, but no, definitely, yeah, absolutely bang on. He's, uh, he's the, he's the bigger loss this year. And that's the, and that's the one that's, that's when it comes to the big, ga- the big games where you're going to need, you know, that de- that defensive effort or you're going to need a big play at some point. That's where I'm really concerned that we yeah. yeah, might not have that. We might not have that kind of weapon. As was there one more? To yep, squeeze so out? One, one more question. Um, who do you think replaces Len Yu moving forward? Because that's that to me is like the one bit of, I guess, a blip in your forward pack now. Mm. Um, yeah, that and that, and again, this is why I. And this is why I was so puzzled with the, uh, the the talk about Clemmer. I thought, Clemmer, like, even if we, you know, there was something where we sort of swung like Clemmer our way, he's not the same. Not it's not the same 
sort of as the, like the same role that Lenu plays. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I I'm not sure that they have a replacement for Lenu's actual role. Um, I dread I dread to think that we're going to start the season with like Matt Eisenhuth as a bench middle. <laughs> I don't think. I mean, I, he's he's been he's 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 okay, but I'm not like yeah. I'm just thinking. I think um, I think Le- uh, Liam Henry is. Um, he's he's had a few a uh, few cracks at first grade. So uh, yeah, I think because um, Lindsay Smith's uh, got one of those bench middle spots locked down, and uh, yeah, so I think probably yeah, probably Liam Henry. I think would take uh, the other. Um, well, I guess he's a hopeful, but you we'd hope to kick up a, a gear this off season and yeah, claim that other spot. It's quite funny the amount of Tigers going your way and Panthers coming back. You mentioned Eisenhuth, Luke Garner, Peachy, Dane Laurie. Yeah, you're filling up with uh, with our guys, Tiger, and we're, Tiger we're, we're we're taking taking. Yeah, we we got Charlie, Jerome, yes. um, and Appy now. So I just I just love the fact that um, like twice in our in our club's histories. We've had two different Dane Laurie's transfer from the West Tigers to the Panthers. Yeah, it's, just, it's, it's amazing. Well, th- well, yeah. this Dane Laurie's got a chance of maybe trying to take that five eighth spot in twenty twenty five. He's he'll definitely he'll definitely have a few games with um, Cleary being out for rep football. So yeah, maybe I'm, I'm really happy a, to get him back. Hmm. Yeah, maybe he can stake a claim because with the ball in his hand, he looked really good for us at five eighty. You know, still defensively, I've yeah. I've got some concern, but he can certainly attack. Oh yeah, that's it. He's, yeah, per- yeah, he's no, the we're, perfect we're fans like, of him. First yeah, sure. Um and lastly, right uh, you guys want oh, to another one. Okay. stats. You guys wanted me to look up some stats earlier, so I did that. I found right, his yep. uh, player profile. Uh so okay. to give the fans something to be a little bit more excited about. So in six seasons, I think that's six seasons. Yeah, six seasons he's played 107 games, he's won 88 of them. So that's an 82% win ratio. Unreal. No tiger has ever ever had that. Uh, Obviously. He, scored, he scored 21 goals, uh, ch- sorry, 21 tries, and he's also made 73 try assists, which is roughly about 0.7 try assists per game. Uh, for a number six who's been playing second fiddle to Nathan Cleary for the vast majority of those 107 games, I think those are some rather sensational numbers. For the West Tigers, did they average above 0.7 as a whole team last year in try assists? Per game, <laughs> probably not. Maybe only just. Yeah. Um, righto. Now we can put a cap on the show. Just, just over bang on an hour. Not bad. We're uh, getting a little bit better at our non Joe Rogan like sized episodes. Thanks for everyone tuning in tonight, all the hundreds of you. Thanks to everyone listening back on audio. If you can, yeah. If you're listening on audio, please go to as Gussie. You would have missed, wouldn't have seen it because you were listening on audio. Gussie, our super fan, did bring up that we don't promote ourselves well enough. Please go to our YouTube, subscribe, like, notifications on. Um, and remember, I set up, if you go to westtigers.com.au, you can find links to all our stuff. So just the West Tigers website, minus ES, spell it incorrectly, and that's how you can find all of our stuff. Um, so West tigers.com.au and that'll yeah that'll be our link tree and that'll send you to yeah any um of our outlets so big thank you as rob as always and shanta yeah this was literally last minute you only yeah got back i stupidly messaged you an hour before going on air and you got back to me um after yeah being a dad doing dad duties just before the show and so yeah this was very much last minute but um yeah thank you very much for yeah joining us on the west life podcast no worries at all uh yeah really appreciate the invite so yeah thanks guys and boys see you in february and as always go the tigers go the tigers go the tigers Thanks for listening to another episode of the West Life Podcast. Please follow us at West Life Pod on Instagram and Twitter and facebook.com forward slash West Life Pod. You can also support and take part in the show at patreon.com forward slash West Life and give us a subscribe on YouTube and turn notifications on. We'll see you again next time on another episode of the West Life Podcast.